Now cross the fingers and turn it on. Hello YouTubers, look what I got today for you. I bought a faulty audio video receiver from Harman and Carbon with the model number AVR270 from eBay for 10 euros in total. This 7.1 receiver has uh, 8 HDMI inputs, so here are 7 and 1 is in front and uh, 1 output to the TV. It can provide up to 100 watts of power to one of its uh, 7 channels. Furthermore, it has an Ethernet connection for internet services like Spotify, Apple's AirPlay or a simple internet radio. The seller told me that the internal fuse is blown. This happens also after a fuse replacement. Should be easy to repair it. Let's do it. Let's disassemble it and have a look inside what we will find. So, as the seller told me that uh, the internal fuse will be uh, destroyed uh, while I'm playing AC supply, I assume that uh, um, the reason for this is um, a damaged component on the power supply. Um, let's try to put the power supply out and uh, look on the, all the components if we will find an um, obvious uh, damaged component. <laughs> Let's check the power supply. Um, I looked already around and I uh, found literally some bugs on it. As you, see, you can see here, but this is not the reason for the blown fuse. Let's try roughly to understand how this power supply is working. The AC comes in at this point and goes through a fuse, an AC filter, an inrush current limiter for the power capacitor and uh, here we have two semiconductors and uh, some logic ICs so probably this is a combination of PFC uh, and a DC DC because uh, after the two semiconductors we have two transformers and two more semiconductors. As I saw here, uh, there is no uh, control AC for the two semiconductors on the output of the transformer, so they must be uh, two diodes. Like I see, it's made symmetrically, and here we have two outputs and the ground. So most likely, um, one set is uh, making a positive supply for the amplifier, and uh, this set is making the negative supply for the amplifier. And uh, here we have two more transformers. I think the smaller one is for the standby function um, that uh, if the supply is attached you can turn on the receiver by pushing the soft button. The slightly bigger transformer uh, should be for the supply of the microcontroller and some other low voltage uh, circuits. The hot and cold side is uh, divided here clearly, so I assume a damaged part will be on the hot side. Um, I already looked at the view SMD components on this side and they are seems okay or not damaged, but um, here, directly on the PFC 
MOSFET is a capacitor, probably it's a sniper capacitor. It's completely black and burnt and has also a crack inside. Uh, on this semiconductor, and it's difficult to see, there is the same part and has the same issues. Let's desolder the two parts and look on it. Here you see the two damaged capacitors. Obviously they experienced a lot of electrical stress. They have burn marks and uh, some cracks on the surface. The marking is 471, uh, which should mean 470 picofarad. And the voltage rating is 1 kilovolt. So I will try to find a replacement with a higher voltage rating uh, to be sure that they will not see that electrical stress again. I replaced uh, the two bad capacitors uh, which had a value of 470 picofarad and I, I found uh, similar parts, 47 pico only to try out if this uh, if this is working and uh, I took this from all the power supply and uh, before I will turn it on it's attached to my isolation transformer I replaced the internal fuse with a lower rating than the fuse uh, which is in my isolation transformer if there is still an issue that this fuse will trip instead of this one in my isolation transformer now cross the fingers and turn it on. Okay. As you probably saw, um, this doesn't help. Uh, let's uh, check some parts in this section. So, um, what I didn't saw before, um, not only the capacitors were bad, but also this uh, MOSFET. You see there is a clearly overshoot happened and uh, this part is probably a short circuit. So, before I proceed I need to um, get this type of MOSFET and also the right uh, capacitors and uh, after that it should work. Let's check the part. I've put it in, uh, in the diode mode and uh, yeah, the component is clearly damaged so I need a replacement. Please have a look. Luckily I found a service manual from a similar device, but uh, I found out that the schematics for the power supply are the same. So let's jump to it. Here you see AVR270 switch mode power supply schematic diagram. And let's go quick through it. And we have here the, our AC inlet fuse, um, some surge protection, switch, inrush limiter, AC filter, bridge rectifier and the diesel link capacitors. On this we have uh, a voltage uh, which is called plus PV. Um, further we have some auxiliary power supplies. Uh, so they are generating different voltages for low power and digital stuff but we are more interesting and in the, in the high power um, here we have the two big transformers and uh, the voltage which is going in is plus PV and goes to the two MOSFETs and one of them is damaged 
and the name of the MOSFET is 11N80C3. This is a typical name from Infineon. So probably 11 amps, N type channel, 800 volt, and the technology of the MOSFET is C3. And also the capacitor which was damaged, 1 kilovolt rating and 470 picofarad. So here as a replacement I will use uh, the same value but with a higher voltage rating. Uh, on the bottom you see the same and these two MOSFETs are generating the power supply for the amplifier stage with plus 50 and minus 50 volts. So to choose a replacement type I looked on the Infineon product page. You can find it on the products power MOSFET and uh, 500 to 950 cool MOS and channel MOSFETs. And here I set it up a filter with uh, Breakdown voltage is greater than 760 or 247 and here you see five types are available. This is the MOSFET from the board, 800 volt, 450 milliohm and 11 amps. I decided to go with a lower RDS on to reduce the power losses so I don't want that the new MOSFET will get warmer than the previous one. But the um, more important thing is uh, to use the same technology of the MOSFET because Infineon has a lot of different types of MOSFET in their portfolio and um, each type has a different switching characteristics. So I assume the designers of the power supply choose the right technology and I will do it also and here we are here's the replacement for the damaged MOSFET and the two capacitors let's uh, put them in um, it's important to do first of all uh, mechanically fix them to the to the heatsink because uh, the whole of the MOSFET needs to be aligned with the hole in the, in the heatsink. After that we will solder them under the board. I'm ready to check again. The MOSFETs are soldered in. Uh, the capacitors also. I turned already on and uh, for a safety reason I will put only the the AC cable into my isolation transformer from a safe distance uh, in case it's damaged again. Now let's see, looks like it's working. Now I will measure the 50 volts output. Please don't do this at home. Zero. This is probably because it's disabled. Let's measure these voltages. Here we are, 5 volt. 5 volt. So I assume it's working. I will assemble the receiver. I will place the power supply in the receiver. Uh, connect everything together and uh, let's check it this way because this is too dangerous to measure it around while high voltage is connected. Also be careful because uh, the internal DC link capacitor is always charged after you unplug. So I will wait for a couple of minutes and measure it again. 
uh, to be really sure that the bulk capacitor is discharged. Now try to switch on the receiver with all cables attached and uh, let's have a look if this will work. Okay, I see an orange light. Now let's turn it on. Hey, beautiful. I don't even know how to use this. The 10 euro amplifier sounds very good. Don't you think so? With a small effort, I fixed it quite fast and quite easy. Again, only a few components turned out the lights in this device. This receiver will see a new owner very soon, because I have already one. I hope you liked this video and learned something out of it. Nevertheless, thanks for watching, subscribe my channel, give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye!